So <clears throat> there's so many people that really fit into a description and understanding of this that maybe uh, you really can identify with this, that, that people can go off to college, they can get their uh, degree, uh, they maybe even get their, their dream job or maybe at, at a place that they always have wanted to work and they're beginning to climb that ladder and their jobs and their life become a series of, of patterns and routines and oftentimes what they think they need is really somebody to love. They have all the things, all the knickknacks, all the cool toys. They've got all the gadgets and cars and garages. But, 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 but their whole life, they're craving something. There's a, a void uh, that can only be filled that they believe by someone, right? When, when you have all the things and when you have all uh, of the things that the world would, be, would consider success, then most people begin to focus on now who can I share it with now I'm ready to, to try and pursue uh, someone and hopefully fall in love and get married uh, you know and grow our family together but but what I want to mention today is as we as we continue this series is this the the, the problem with with this life and living this life is that the the things of this world ultimately will not satisfy us in the way that we crave it uh, but the solution is not quite on the mark we do need a relationship right but 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 it isn't with another person um this side of heaven it's with jesus <clears throat> oftentimes people who crave after things whether it be cars or like we talked about at the beginning of this series money uh, or even relationships or like like you know even uh, just the the, the things of, of our work of our pursuing uh, what our career may be or what our next step is the next thing can ultimately leave us with empty promises chasing after something that that we do not really need it's not healthy for us but yet we choose to pursue it i think that you and i can relate to that i think that you and i can relate to pursuing after something that you don't need pursuing after someone that's not healthy for you and entering into a relationship that begins a cycle of your life some of you uh, feel like your, your relationships, you keep dating the same, um, you, know, you know, you know, the ladies keep feeling like they're dating the same guy over and over and over again. Uh, maybe they, they treat you the same, but they're the different, they, they wear different faces, but, uh, but they treat you similarly. Why is that? Why are you maybe asking, why do I keep finding these guys? Why can't I find a good man? Or maybe some of the guys out there are wondering like, why won't anyone, you know, uh, stick around? What is what are the issues that, that, that I'm facing or things that I need to overcome? We are trying to fill the void in our lives with people, with money, with things, and we lose sight. Or maybe some of us don't even know, and, and I'm so glad you're here with us today, that Jesus is the relationship. Jesus fills the void of life. Jesus fills the void of, of, of possessions. Jesus fills, fills the void of relationship. Because when you truly understand that Jesus owns it all, that he created it all, he is the creator king. Now when he created all of these things and he owns all of these things, that it shifts our way of thinking and our way of life. And so, what we have to, to do today is we're going to look at what the Bible says about contentment. That, that, that you and I can grow to be content. Now, <clears throat> when just a few months ago, we uh, did a series called Joyful. And I want to encourage you to go check that out because Joyful walks us through the book of Philippians. If there ever were a book of the Bible that, that helped encourage us and teach us about what it means to be content, it is the book of Philippians. The book of Philippians helps us to understand that contentment is not just about um, having what I have and being saying, oh, well, great, this is what I have, and I'm going to just leave it here. The, the church in Philippi, they, they, they strived not just for 
numerical growth, but they strive for spiritual kingdom growth. And that's not a bad thing. That's the call. That's the mission. But when you and I begin to grow in our contentment in Christ, then the things that we are blessed with and the things that we are given, it, it, it allows our hearts to be open and unlocked for generosity, for deep love and relationship, for, for a beautiful, open, and honest biblical community. So if you have your Bibles, I want, to, I want you to turn to Luke chapter 3. You can also find this if you have the YouVersion uh, Bible app. You can actually search the event. You can search Freedom Hope Church. Uh, or even if you're here in this beautiful city of Chicago, you can even search by location. Uh, and our event will pop up. And, and it has all the scriptures in there. And you can even take notes and do all sorts of things through the YouVersion Bible app in that event. So I encourage you to check that out if you uh, have the YouVersion Bible app. So we're going to Luke chapter 3. And we're going to look at verse... 10 and we're going to start at verse 10 through 14. So Luke 3 beginning of verse 10 says this, what then should we do? The crowds were asking him. He replied to them, the one who has two shirts must share with someone who has none and the one who has food must do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and they asked him, teacher, what should I what should we do? He told them, don't collect any more than what you have been authorized. Some soldiers also questioned him, what should we do? He said to them, don't take money from anyone by force or false accusation and be satisfied with your wages. So let's paint the picture. We are in the ancient times, right? So Jesus in Luke chapter three, some soldiers and tax collectors are asking John the Baptist about how to live after hearing his message. And so John answers them, do not extort money, right, from, from anyone or, or by threats or by false accusation and do not and be content with your wages. The point here is one that we all can relate to, to be satisfied with the income that we have, right? That doesn't mean you don't look for a different job that may provide more for your family. But it does mean that you don't look at the lives of others and their possessions and decide that you'll do whatever it takes, including stealing or becoming a workaholic, to have the lifestyle that you want. As a dean in a high school, uh, I, I, I work with a lot of families that suffer from a myriad of different things. Some are workaholics. Some <clears throat> pursue their job or job after job trying to make ends meet for their family because they want to them to live a certain way and, and so much so that they're not present. Uh, some families, uh, you know, the, the, the parents or guardians or whomever are just in bad spaces. Uh, the, 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 the mentality, the understanding that they're stuck in a rut and there's no way forward. And so the best thing that they can do is try and say out loud and, and, and convince their children that the things uh, that they see other people have are, are what they should strive for. The money, the cars, the fame, right? Uh, the, the particular skill to get that money. So <clears throat> our, our families all around us are suffering from the disease of covetousness. What does coveting mean? Coveting is, is seeing something that's not yours, but desperately desiring for it to be no matter what it takes. Stealing, robbing, killing, false accusation, uh, laying the pretense of, of frame, whatever it may be, right? People will do whatever it takes to get that which is someone else's. And so when you and I are, are, are understanding this, that contentment is the opposite of covetousness. Contentment helps us gather ourselves and understand that what we have is a gift from the Almighty God. It's a beautiful, blessed gift. Because so many people are caught up in the things that, that, that's coming and what's next. And how can I get that money? How can I become a famous YouTuber? How can I become a rapper? How can I become a ball player? Uh, how can I get to that level or status? And, and, and now inherently those things aren't bad like we've talked about. But, but when, we, what we're doing, when we're doing that is to take it back to our first message. We are laying up treasures for ourselves here on earth. And earthly treasures have an earthly outcome. 
they are going to be destroyed. They're going to be wiped away. They're going to be rotted away. Clothes will, 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 will burn and, and be destroyed. Our cars will, will be turned into junk, right? Things that we hold dear and that we find precious on this earth that we've spent our hard-earned money for will dissipate. But, but, but when you and I begin to understand that we can find contentment in Christ, it shifts our way of living, not just our mind, not by the renewing of our mind, but it shifts our paradigm of life. Because then we no longer begin to seek after the things that are in the window as we window shop in other people's lives. What we, what we begin to see is that Christ has blessed me enough that, that, that I can be right here. Like growing up, the older saints used to say, if he doesn't do anything else for me, he's done enough. Well, what do they mean by that? I mean, Christ, they're, 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 they're saying he's given me life. He's blessed me with, 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 with what I have. He's given me this church. He's, he's blessed me with the work that I've been able to do for all these many years. He's provided food on my table. When times when I thought no one was going to come through, when, and when I thought my bank account was at an absolute zero, that it may just dip into the negative, God provided a way for me. He has blessed me. He has, he has saved my soul from eternal damnation and condemnation and separation from him and says, I am going to spend eternity with him in heaven, that I will experience the new heavens, the new earth and the marriage supper of the lamb. And I will sing a new song that the universe has never heard before, along with my brothers and sisters, the sons and daughters of Jesus Christ. That is what they mean when they're saying that even if he doesn't do anything else for me, he has done enough. His shed blood has done enough enough. Now, I want us to, to, to dive in here because the Greek word in Luke 3.14, uh, as well as in the other passages, is archeo. And archeo, the primary meaning of this is to be possessed of unfailing strength, which manifests itself in, in part in, in satisfaction and contentment. Now, <clears throat> we know that not every situation you endure, that I endure, is going to be enjoyable, right? Not everything that we're going to experience is going to be fun. You know, holidays are coming, Thanksgiving, Christmas. One of the things that we're going to see is that some people, especially this year, may be missing from that table. Uh, maybe you don't even enjoy your own family gatherings, but you go because they're family. Uh, and and you, you, you're, you're trying to prepare yourself mentally before you get there, before you pull into the driveway, before you, you know, hop on the plane, right? Uh, <clears throat> there are some things that are going to transpire. And one of the things that this word means, archeo, is, is it takes a lot of strength to remember to count your blessings when times are tough. So I want to challenge us. That in the moments when we believe that other people have what we want and we begin this, this terrible, terrible habit of comparison. Comparison is the enemy of contentment. Just like contentment is the opposite of covetousness, comparison is the enemy of being content. If you want to wipe away any idea or, or, or part of contentment you have in your life, then begin to compare your life with others. Compare your work with others. Compare your family with others. You will end up in a deep depressional state because surrounded by anxiety and worries because you're fretting over the things that other people have and maybe should I be doing this? Should my child be doing this? Should my husband be doing this? Should my wife be treating me this way? Should my work be uh, responding to me in this way? Should I be making this much money? Um, uh, should I be traveling Should you know, or, or doing this? Or should I um, uh, not be working and, and, and taking care of my family in this manner or, or am I what am I doing wrong right comparison swells in our brains it's like it's like a marble right trapped in a, in a, in a globe spinning around and around and, and you're trying to chase after you're trying to figure out where it's going to go in which direction but you can't and you will lose your sanity comparing yourself and your life and everything to other people. It literally is the enemy of contentment. Comparison is not built and designed for us to truly like 
put up our house in the midst of Comparison Town. Comparison Town is a place where you go to lose your mind uh, because you will begin to, to see that other people's lives are greatly different than yours and, and they may seem a little bit more forward, a little bit more successful. They may have a little bit bigger family. They may seem how online they may be able to manage things a little bit better than you. Let me, let me tell you something, a little secret. Nobody posts the bad things online. Nobody posts the terrible days. Everyone, po they love to post the smiles. They love to post the things that tug on your heartstrings. But they, but they don't love to post the things in their life that makes them cry. The things in the life that, that they don't enjoy about their life. The, the, the parts and relationships and arguments that they get in with their spouse, the frustrations they have with their kids, the, 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 the eruption that is about to come forth in their family. They don't want to post that because they want you to think that their life is so great and so grand, but all the while as you're compa comparing your life to theirs, they are in utter turmoil. Don't do that. Stay away from comparison. Comparison is the enemy of contentment. Now, Looking at two other passages in the New Testament that use this word can help us to understand it better. The first is Hebrews 13, 5. It says, keep your life free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So this passage has two commands and a reason for being able to, 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 to do these commands. The command number one is do not love money. Don't be so consumed with money that we talked about this when we first kicked, you know, kicked off our series, The Next Thing, with talking about money. Do not be consumed by the love of money. Um, <clears throat> one of my, uh, I love old school music, okay? And by old school, I mean like the OJs, um, you know, Luther Vandross, uh, Anita Baker, Aretha Franklin, James Brown, like those, you know, uh, Temptations, those are my boys. So <laughs> much fun. Anyway, um, <clears throat> but the OJs, have several songs uh, that I really want you, but but for the love of money, is a wonderful song that helps you understand what people will do for the love of money. The, the, the OJ's lay it out. They will lie, steal, beg, and cheat for the love of money. Right? They they will do all of these things. They will they will swindle you. They will cheat you. They will steal. They will kill, all for the love of money. And and and, and so when we're looking at this understanding that that Jesus has placed this command do not love money uh, it, it is dangerous to love money so he, it's very it's very 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 straightforward so God tells us to love him and others he never he never says to love possessions in fact he tells us not to love them here's the second command the second command is to be content and it seems from this verse that, that the two are very related. If you don't love money, then you can be content. But if you love money, you will never be content. And here's the promise that he gives, that he will never leave you or forsake you. So no matter where you are right now, if you're struggling financially, if you're, or, or if you seem to be having a really great year, God wants to encourage you, do not lose sight of him. Do not replace the th him on the throne of your heart with a wad of cash. Because cash is susceptible to fire, susceptible to water. It can burn. It can be destroyed. Right? Currency comes and goes. The value rises and falls. But God's love is constant. His love and presence are always there. Let us strive and pursue after a God who says, I deeply love you. I want to be around you. I want you to be around me. And I want to place people in your life, a community of, of church where you can grow to know, love, and serve my son, serve me, and be empowered by my Holy Spirit to do something miraculous, to do something spectacular, to do something great in my name. So as we are walking through the text, we are walking through life, do not choose covetousness stay away from comparison for it is the enemy of contentment and here's what i want to, want to lay out for us today and this is extremely important and i want to spend some time on it whatever you praise you pursue whatever you praise you pursue Another verse where, where this word shows up is 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 8. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and we can take nothing out. If we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. In other words, you can't take it with you. <clears throat> Here's what I, what I mean by this is 
whatever you praise, whatever you praise and give all of life. We, we know this and believe this at Freedom Hope Church. All of life is worship. Your life is a song. And, 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 and what are you singing your song to? Who are you lifting up your song, your life to? All of life is worship. And so if all of life is worship, who or what do you worship? Because whatever you praise, whatever you worship, that is who you're going to pursue. If you praise having a relationship, you will do anything and everything to get a relationship. You, you will move from person to person thinking that that's what you're supposed to do. If you praise getting money, then you're going to try and strive to always ask for a promotion, trying to get that raise. What can I do on the side? How can I partner with them over there? How can I, how can my, my wallets get more full? Even to the point where you will overlook laws and, and gloss over important facts and things that you need to utilize so that your wallet becomes a little bit bigger. Often, you know, what we praise, if it means having the perfect home with a perfect family, you're going to do all the things that you, that you can to try and make sure that your life is perfect. Well, uh, allow me to burst your bubble. It's not, you're not perfect. Your life, not perfect. It never will be until if you accept Jesus Christ and you meet him in the heavenly realms, that is perfect. That is where perfection lies. That is where it shall remain for all eternity. And so this life will never truly be perfect. What it means, what we have to channel and, and master is to grow in our contentment. So as we are moving forward and growing, uh, the things that we have to understand this is that whatever we praise, you pursue. Whatever you, 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 you put on the altar of your heart to say, this is what I want to pursue and pursue after, it is going to, to, go, to go after your life and everything you are is going to chase after it full steam ahead. So a lot of the times when we're thinking of our life, it's, it's, it's about the next thing. It's about taking inventory um, and seeing what is it that, that I can do? What is it that I can uh, see and do? And how can I live and move uh, in this understanding of worship? What do I worship, right? Uh, part of seeing that is where do you spend most of your money, right? And uh, now outside of, of course, living expenses like rent and electricity and utilities and things like that. Uh, but, but, but where do your finances go, right? When, when, we're, when we're stepping aside all the things that you need to survive, the roof over your head, food, things like that. But, but where does our money go? I would challenge you to start there. Because is it, is it giving? Are you giving generously, sacrificially towards the mission and vision of Jesus? Are you, are, you, are you giving of your time, talent, and treasure? Not just of money, but, but of who you are. Because, listen, everything is his. Psalm 50 verse 10 tells us that everything belongs to Jesus. He owns the, 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 the cattle the, on a thousand hills, but he owns the hills too. Everything is his. It belongs to Jesus. The earth and the fullness thereof and all those who inhabit the earth are his. They belong. We belong to him. And so the difference is, <clears throat> as a person being, as a being created in the image and likeness of God, or what we call an image bearers, right? We, we are image bearers as, as, as human beings. We, are, we, we belong to Jesus. But, but, but there's a difference between being and existing as a human being and belonging to Jesus and, 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 and coming to saving faith in Christ and then experiencing his steadfast love and his amazing grace, his beautiful justice, his, 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 his mercy and, and saving us from eternal separation, from hell and condemnation, and in many ways saving us from ourselves. That allows, that shifts from, from, from ownership to family. It shifts from you, yes, you created in my likeness, to now we share blood. Because through Jesus' shed blood, where life is found, life is found in the blood. And so when we're, when we're praising Jesus, we pursue after what he would have us to pursue. Who, who, like we said, we started in a series in August, who is our one? Who's that one person that you and I could be praying for, pursuing, right? Our life group is going through the good life, walking through the Beatitudes. Happy are the peacemakers. Happy are, are the merciful, right? We're happy are the meek. We are talking about things that pursue the mission and purpose of Jesus to seek and save the lost. But he's given us and laid out for us a roadmap to follow that trusts in 
him. So when we praise Jesus, not just on a Sunday morning, not just lifting up our hands to a song that really moves our hearts and sways our emotions to, to fix our eyes on him, but when we live a life of worship and a life of praise, when, when praise goes for, from, from, from a Sunday thing to becoming what I do and how I live and move and breathe and have my being, it shifts everything. Life becomes a worship. My life becomes a praise to him, a song to him, to thank him, to praise him through the good times, through the bad, through tears, and through laughter. That is who, what we ought to be doing. That's how we grow in our contentment. Contentment is a way of letting go of our attachments to the things of this world and not, not becoming too entangled with what is not eternal. Because if we have what we need, food and clothing, or we might say that the bare necessities of life, we can be content. And so my second point for you is this. Um, look for the bare necessities. I said it. I said it. Look for the... Anyway, um, look for the bare necessities, right? The bare necessities of life. Now, if you don't know, that's song in Jungle Book. But um, look for the bare necessities necessities. It's important to pause and recognize that people in this world have the bare necessities and even more, especially uh, or maybe even around you, but, but, but they're not satisfied. Perhaps some of them are, are here or visit or watching this morning. And the question is, do you have Jesus? In Hebrews 13, 5, the reason we're able to not love money and be content is the second half of the verse where he said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Because it is the presence of Jesus that enables us to be content in him. Uh, we, 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 we do need someone to love. And we, need, we do need a hole in our life that can't be filled with, with anything, whether we land our dream job or not. We need Jesus. And only he can satisfy our deepest needs. And so uh, St. Augustine of Hippo, North, North Africa, prayed this. Our hearts are restless until they can find rest in you. So my question to you today is this. Does your heart rest in Jesus? Or are you still searching for a home for it that it can satisfy you in a way that nothing else can in this life? That's the beauty of the gospel. That Jesus lived a life blameless. Sure, he was tempted. He experienced every temptation that you and I do. Tempted and overcame. Went to the cross. Died there. Three days later, rose with all power and opportunity for us to be family, for us to be sons and daughters of the Most High God. <clears throat> His steadfast love catapults us to a response. And I want to I challenge you to respond today. Does your heart rest in Jesus? So here's my soul tattoo for this week. We don't have to continually seek after the latest, greatest thing, the next thing. Instead, we should seek Christ, and he will satisfy our desires. Psalm 34, verse 7, if you would delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. Not, 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 not like a genie, not a butler, but, but, but when you get to know Jesus, your will becomes absorbed into his, and the desires of your heart are given to you by the Almighty Father. They're, they're relayed to you through His Word and through His Holy Spirit and by the work of His Son. You get to experience the desires of your heart because it's not just your fleshly heart. It is a, the, the desires of a divine, loving Father who wants you to grow in Him. So, I would encourage you, if you don't know Jesus, this is a perfect time for you. Uh, to realize who Jesus is in your life, that you can grow in contentment because of him, that you can experience salvation. And if you do know Jesus, I want to encourage you to this, to really think through and ask yourself, does my heart rest in my creator king right now and what I'm going through and my and, and whatever it is with whatever I have, does it rest in Jesus? And so if you want to come to know saving faith in Jesus, let us know today. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to, to gather with you. We'd love to uh, just send you a really cool gift um, to welcome you and celebrate with you joining into the family of God. Listen, I love you, and uh, I can't wait to see you guys soon.